Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activations. And today, I am at Lake Norman State Park here in uh, the Piedmont of North Carolina, sort of between Statesville and Charlotte. Uh, actually, I think, the, I think the town here is called Troutman, uh, that the park's actually in. This is a wonderful park, by the way. If you're ever in this area, if you're traveling south on I-77 heading towards Charlotte, or uh, I-40, uh, you're never going to be too far away because the junction of I-40 and uh, 77 is really not too far from Lake Norman State Park, and it's a beautiful park. The uh, You can't see the lake's out there right now, but it's just pouring rain, and <laughs> not a day that I felt like putting up a rain fly or something over a really wet picnic table. Instead, I thought I'd take advantage of the fact that I'm the only car here in the picnic area. <laughs> There's no one else here today, so I've got this whole picnic shelter to myself. Did I check to make sure that this picnic shelter is actually free? Let's make sure that no one's got it reserved for some strange reason. Shelter available. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, but yeah, so I just use the shelter because the shelter's here. The shelter is um, a really great spot to operate because I don't have to worry about protecting any of my gear. Nothing gets wet. It's really nice. And, uh, yeah, I've missed Lake Norman State Park. I used to activate here a whole lot. And for some reason, the past few months, I just haven't been here. And it's not because I don't like the park. I love this park. It's a little teeny bit further afield for me uh, than some of the other parks I go to. And I think it's because when I've been in this area helping my folks, I've been a little shorter on time uh, some days. So I've just done other things. And then other days when I've had a lot of time that I decided to go further afield to do like a soda activation or something. Today I really, really, really wish I could put in uh, some time hiking because Lake Norman has, it's way down here, there's a trailhead to a really, really nice trail that uh, I think it's called the Lakeshore Trail that goes around the lake and it snakes around and it's one of those things, it's like, it's deceptively long, actually. I think you can do the trail, if I remember correctly, I've done the trail as a three-mile hike and also as a six-mile hike. Uh, it, when you look at it on a map, it does not look like there's any possible way it could be that long, but since it sort of snakes along the edge of the trail where the lake, you know, where, along the lakeshore, and that's the reason they call it the Lakeshore Trail, it snakes around so much that um, I think if you elongated it, it can be <laughs> you know, a total six miles. And I would do it today, but I'm just not in the mood to get super wet and then muddy. Uh, that trail would be pretty muddy in places today, so I'm just not going to bother with that. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll even go do a soda activation or something. Today I'm just going to chill and enjoy this nice uh, <laughs> wet weather uh, here in this uh, dry uh, picnic shelter. And so today I was trying to think, you know, what can I do a little differently today? I... When I operate in shelters, I'll often take my antenna, if it's a wire antenna, I'll uh, shoot it through a tree that's nearby, run the line through so that uh, the base of my antenna may be inside underneath the shelter, you know, where it's dry. Or I'll use one of my vertical antennas that's pretty darn waterproof and just stick it out next to the, uh, uh, next to the side of the uh, shelter and just run my feed line in. Today I want to try something a little different. I, you, you've seen me before, like many, many times, take my Elecraft AX1 and AX2 underneath a shelter and operate that way. It's, it's not an ideal way to operate because you are basically underneath a big roof. This one happens to be metal on the other side. It's a metal roof. Um, I'm not going to go out there and show you right now because I'll probably get drops all over the camera lens and forget to wipe it off and you'll have this big blurry spot. Uh, for the uh, entirety of my activation. But basically, it's a, a green metal roof that's on top of this uh, shelter. So it's not ideal. That's not, not the conditions you normally want to operate in. But with parks on the air and some of those activities where you've got a lot of hunters out there, I think even with poor conditions, even at low power, I've found that I've really never had an issue activating a park with an antenna underneath a shelter. Now, why wouldn't I just put my wire antenna out and run my feed line from it? It's a lot of my field antennas are not designed to get really wet. 
like a light drizzle, something like that, or if they're underneath a canopy where they're really not getting that much water, probably not an issue. But if they're getting drenched, they usually, they're not designed to do that. And the reason why is because if you look at a lot of my infed halfways and stuff, the coil, the nine to one or 64 to one or whatever combination of the coil is that's at the matching unit level, those are usually just protected with heat shrink or something like that. They're not completely encapsulated. I do have a couple of antennas that are completely encapsulated and probably pretty darn waterproof, as long as I waterproof the connector, uh, um, you know, where I feed it. But if they get wet, they don't, they don't work properly. <laughs> In fact, it's kind of amazing to me that a lot of people, I know someone who uh, recently actually contacted me and they said, Thomas, I can't figure out what's going on with my infed half wave. I build an infed half wave from a kit. I have used it. It works beautifully most of the time. And then sometimes when I try to use it, it just, I can't get a good match. And I have to use an antenna tuner. And even when I use an antenna tuner, it's up and down. Like I have to keep rematching it. But then other times it works really well. And the first question I asked them was, is this permanently located outdoors? And they said, yep, it's at my house. Uh, it's my main antenna here. And, uh, and I said, well, are, is, it, is it getting wet? Are you operating it in the rain? And they said, oh, uh, could the rain affect it? Well, yeah, if that core is not that, that iron... Um, ferrite, if it gets wet, and especially a really tight spacing um, with your magnetic wire, whatever is going around it, if you, if you got really tight spacing, the water can bridge all that stuff and just completely mess with the dynamics of that. And, and he's like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. And so he just designed, you know, he redesigned it in a way that would keep that part dry and he never had a problem after that. Well, I, I just don't even bother taking my antennas out. I don't want to have to dry them out or do anything. I don't want them to change their dynamics while I'm using them. So I just cheat and put my antennas underneath the shelter. And that's what we're going to do today. And it's actually giving me a really cool opportunity to try something new. I brought my uh, Chelligant's MC750 antenna. I've been using this a whole lot lately. People have been asking me, by the way, uh, to do a video on the difference between the MC750 and the Chameleon Impasse Light, And I will do that video. If I've already done it, if I can remember, I'll put a link to it above. I plan to do that here just in the next week or so because uh, they're both excellent antennas. Uh, but I can maybe just help you make a purchase decision if, you've, if you're considering one of these two. I've probably gotten a dozen questions about that in the past month because I've been using this antenna so much. But Basically, uh, this is the Chelligan's MC750 vertical antenna package. This doesn't come with this is my own coaxial cable, but it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful vertical antenna. But it, like the impasse light, it has a stainless steel spike. Now, I I would have no issue at all sitting this out here and hooking it up and not worrying too much about really water intrusion. Uh, the antenna itself would be fine. The only place I'd have to worry about it would really be the connector. I think in the amount of time I'm here and everything, it probably would not be an issue. But I've got an, a different option now <laughs> that I didn't have before. Jesse, uh, who is a ham radio operator and he runs Chelligans, he's a Chinese amateur radio operator. He reached out to me at the same time, probably three or four of you reached out to me saying, hey, you need to check out the Chelligant's uh, tripod. And I know the story, the backstory behind this. So Jesse, once he started selling some of these MC750s through his distributors and directly, he um, got some feedback from readers saying, you know, we'd really like to have a tripod to go with this. And... So he thought, well, you know, so he went out and I guess sourced or made a tripod to work specifically for the MC750, and this is it. I don't know the price of it or anything right now, but I think it's on the Chelligans website. In full disclosure, um, you know, Chelligans, I do have affiliate links with Chelligans now um, because I like them. I only do affiliate links with companies I completely trust. Um, I'm very impressed with their work uh, and their stuff, and so I felt really comfortable doing that. Jesse's a great guy. He's going to be at Hamvention this year. If it's not too late, <laughs> if this video is not being published after Hamvention, he will actually have a table at Hamvention, so you can go meet him. Really nice guy. And uh, he originally sent me this to evaluate when this was a very new antenna to the market. And so I evaluated it and reviewed it. He, I, it came at no cost to me whatsoever. Uh, he just sent it to me. 
Uh, if you know me, I don't do a lot of that. I actually prefer just buying stuff. But I didn't know anything about this antenna or the company or anything, and so I didn't really want to invest in it. And now I'm telling you, I, I would, I'd almost buy a second one of these because <laughs> I really like this antenna a lot. Uh, so um, if uh, that's that's sort of my disclaimer, uh, Jesse contacted me uh, probably two weeks ago, and he said, "Hey, I've got this new tripod. Would you like to check it out?" And I thought about it and I was like, you know, several people have asked me to do a video on it. So sure. So he sent me this again at no cost to me. And it's a really simple little tripod. It's kind of cool actually how it works. It just kind of flips out and the legs, um, it looks like the legs wouldn't be, you know, that wouldn't be vertical when it does this. It'd be like a little off center, but it's perfect. They're actually designed really nicely. It's a wide enough base for the MC750. And this is a really nice option. Well, it's going to be an option for me today. I've, this is the first time I've used this base. And it's the first time I've ever set up the MC750 inside of a building. I don't know that I'll be able to extend the uh, telescoping whip the full way. So I may end up having to use my KX2 internal antenna tuner, which is the reason why I've got my KX2 today. Because I may end up having to just use the ATU to make the matches. Especially if I'm going to be below probably 20 meters, in fact. I don't even know if the 20 meter will extend the full way uh, to fit underneath this. Um, so we're going to set this up and see how this works inside a um, picnic shelter. And probably what I'll do is um, set it up. My, my feed line's kind of long for this thing. Um, I'll probably set it up like right over here maybe. I'll set it up like right here. I need it to get as much room up there as I can get and spread the lines out and then run my feed line around or something. And we'll just see if it works. Propagation has been in the dumps lately, so I wouldn't be too surprised if we have horrible propagation today. But uh, let's go ahead and give us a, a go and see how it works. I'm going to pause this just a second so I can set up my tripod and everything. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And... Uh, it's actually a little bit longer than I was planning to be off the video here for a little bit. It's really funny. Um, I'm not here setting up. And when I first got here, like literally just got here and parked, there was another car here. And I didn't see anybody around. And as I just took my bags, my backpack, and set it over here, I hadn't opened up anything. I just had my bags. I was sitting my bags over here. I saw a hiker come out of the woods right here got in their car kind of quickly and then took off and that was it. And, um, and then I, that's the only other car that's ever, that's been here today, but I really got the place to myself. And so anyway, I've been doing this video and I set my stuff out here to set up the antenna and I saw two park ranger cars come up two two park ranger trucks. And I thought that was a little odd. Uh, I'm used to seeing park rangers and I'm used to talking to park rangers, but not usually two of them following each other. And so they came out and I said, Hey, how's it going? And uh, they came over and um, one of them was very much a law enforcement uh, park ranger. And the other one was just, I think one of the staff here, maybe, maybe they both are. Um, one of them I recognize because I've seen him here before. And I said, I said, Oh no, is the park shelter, is it is it reserved today? And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, um, uh, and I said, well, I'm just doing a Parks on the Air activation. He said, oh, yeah, okay, great. He said, you're, uh, you're a ham radio operator. And I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay, fantastic. And he said, yeah, we got a report that there was somebody here at this picnic shelter with a load of, of rifles and guns uh, that they were setting up on a picnic table. <laughs> And, you know, I was thinking about it. He said, I said, gosh, you know, he said, so I'm guessing you don't have any guns with you. And I said, no, I've got an antenna, you know, and, um, they, uh, they were just kind of chuckling about it. And, uh, and you know, the thing that really surprises me, I just had this backpack and this was closed. So there was no, you know, there was nothing that really even looked like a gun, but I guess people's imaginations kind of run wild I've, I've heard so many stories and I haven't had anything quite like this before, uh, happen. Uh, so this is a little bit of a first for me, but it was perfectly fine. The park rangers got a big chuckle out of it. They said that they absolutely love ham radio operators come out here and doing POTA activations. They were just, they couldn't have been nicer. I mean, they just, they could not have been any kinder than they were. 
Um, so we just all got a big laugh out of it because one of the sta- one of the park staff, as soon as he saw me, he recognized me because um, his dad used to be a ham, and <laughs> so. It's just funny that it happens. I've had people tell me um, all kinds of stories about going to park. It's it's funny because, you know, I don't know. I, I think probably this person had an overactive imagination. But, you know, uh, I know here in this, I, I have heard of people, you know, getting into some pretty weird situations. In fact, one of our um, subscribers here, a uh, crazy guy, just like someone really crazy. He was in an urban park, came over and just was just shouting at him and doing stuff and threatening him. And um, it was obviously someone that was really out of their mind. And um, I've heard people be reported for being spies. I've been, I have been asked, but I think it's just jokingly, you know, if I'm a spy, because people hear Morse code and Morse code just sounds weird, right? Like, you know, for people who aren't used to hearing Morse code, it just sounds really weird. And I think it makes them think about all those uh, movies they've watched where people have used Morse code. So they assume you're a spy. And by the way, if you're a spy and you're this conspicuous, then you're a terrible spy. (laughs) But Anyway, I haven't had this happen before, but you know, I'm not too, not too surprised. Uh, the good news is actually a lot of these parks, it's really interesting. When I first started doing parks on the air, you know, park rangers didn't really know uh, much about, um, you know, amateur radio operators. This isn't parks on the air, worldwide flora and fauna, even national parks on the air. When that was a program, you know, it's not like all of them got a memo saying you're going to have amateur radio operators show up and they're going to be doing this thing in your park that they've never, you've never seen before, which is string up antennas, put up vertical antennas, um, hear Morse code, you know, radios and all that stuff. So it's not too surprising that when you're doing something a little out of the ordinary that you could get, um, you know, you could get some inquiries about it. But the uh, whole thing, of course, is just be kind and non-threatening and <laughs> you know, tell people uh i guess maybe she I, I mean i guess this person maybe saw this bag and thought it was i don't know anyway it was kind of funny we got a good laugh out of it and i hope i didn't scare that person too badly but um i think they probably just had an overactive imagination um i hate to think what they would have thought if they would have seen the components of this uh uh, this uh, antenna out. Maybe they'd have thought it was even something more. But anyway, let's get this guy set up. Now, what I decided to do, by the way, is I moved it away from this center column. I was I was going to set it up over here, and I thought, no, no, that doesn't make sense. There's these big extra metal uh, brackets up there holding the rafters and stuff. So I'm just going to kind of put it kind of off to the side in the middle. There's no way to avoid all this. And I'm looking at it again, and I know there is no way that I'll be able to extend this for 20 meters. So I'll definitely have to use my tuner and hopefully the KX2 can tune this antenna to 20 meters, even though I don't have a full quarter wave out. I may have to tinker around with it a little bit and see. Uh, again, the dynamics will not be normal because I am not, um, I've got it inside a building basically. I mean, with open sides, but it's kind of inside of a building. So all we need to set this up, first of all, is this little bit right here. I think this comes with the tripod. Make sure it's screwed in really nicely. Then I connect that, make sure it's on there really nice and tight. Then I put this extension on. And then I put the whip on. Now I can tell you now, I'm probably not gonna be able to do this camera and show you the whip being fully extended. I'll show you the end results. There we go, put the whip on. Now this is good for 20 meters. Now I do have a 40 meter coil I could put on here. And so if I can't get a match on 20, what I may do is put the 40 meter coil on and see if that makes a difference. Cause that'll kind of electrically lengthen it. Maybe I'll be able to more easily get a match with it. But I'm gonna go ahead and extend this now and uh, see how far I can get. Now, again, I will not be able to show all this on camera right now, but we'll give it a go here. Okay. That is as far as I can go without actually touching the ceiling. 
There are some metal brackets there too. There's no way to really get around getting near metal, I don't think. Maybe, maybe you know what? If I move it over this way just a bit, that may be slightly better. Let me move it toward the middle here. And uh, just a little bit further. And that is standing freely with some spider webs on the end. Good. This will have to do. Just make sure this is all really nice and tight again. It is. Did a pretty good job with that. Okay. Now we attach the counterpoises. Okay. So I'm going to pull this uh, one counterpoise out here. This is the only thing that takes time with the Chelligans. And you know what I've been thinking about doing? is not using the winder. I actually think this is a pretty clever winder. But I'm thinking about just when I wrap these up to do them as a figure eight, I think I can probably deploy them and wind them up more quickly. But I'll need to find a you know nice way to cinch all these together. But when I have it as a figure eight, I can just take it and deploy it by throwing it. And it pretty much just goes where I want it to go. Super easy with a figure eight. Now I'm gonna straighten these out when I'm done here. But now, now the park rangers know where I am, and I can see on a day like today, especially where there's literally just like nobody at the park. Like this other person was here briefly when I was here, and I don't know if they were on a hike or what. But it is more conspicuous when you're the only person here. And it could have been that this person was thinking that I was going to do some illegal hunting or something like that on park grounds. <laughs> there are a bunch of deer here. I'm not a hunter, okay, but there are a ton of deer on this park, of course, that are protected. Uh, maybe, maybe that's what they were thinking I was doing. I don't know. It's a first for me. I'm just, I'm just uh, kind of uh, impressed that I would look like somebody that would just uh, come to a state park and pull out a bunch of stuff and throw it on the table like that. Here we go. That's one more. I don't think I've ever, anybody's ever confused me with like, uh, um, <laughs> being, I don't know, being like a full on tactical guy. Okay, there we go. Let's get this out. Okay, now what I'll try to do, and this will be a little bit off camera, but I'm just gonna try to spread these lines out so that the, they're just kind of straight, the counterpoise wires. They don't have to be perfect. We obviously don't have a perfect antenna system going on here today. It's compromised from the start. And it's on concrete instead of just being on the ground. So, oh, yes, Let's get the end of the feed line. Now, I will tell you this. This is an excessively long feed line for what I need here, but I've been using it because it's really convenient when I need to place the antenna further away from where I'm operating. Uh, but what I'll do... I make sure that the feed line does not coil. Um, very early on, we used to mess with antennas, I'd allow it to coil a bit, and I found out really quickly that really it's not the best thing to do. Uh, you're gonna uh, cause some attenuation when you do that, so it's best just to um, spread out the cable and make sure that it's nice and just spread out. It doesn't have to be any particular configuration. Okay, KX2, I need you to do your matching thing for me today. Let's move this and get things set up. Thanks, by the way, for coming out here today. Should enjoy this. This is actually a really nice view in the winter when there's no leaves on the trees. You can see the lake out there um, just off in the distance. You can sort of see that light area that's lake. But today it's just all rain. <laughs> 
fog. <laughs> okay. Got my right in the rain pad. Don't really have to have it. So this is what I'm talking about earlier. I was talking about this. Like this Pactena, you know, the coil is exposed here. Most of these are, are that way because you're kind of compromising with the field antenna. The field antenna is not going to be out permanently. And um, so you just don't worry. They assume that you're not going to be out operating in full on rain. If you are, then you need to protect this a little bit better. So this just has some really nice sort of heat shrink on there that's super durable and protects it really nicely. But if this were to get just drenched, it would definitely affect the antenna's performance. I've got to look and see what uh, keys I brought with me today. I'm not going to use the SPD2 or whatever it's called paddle um, on the KX2. I don't really need to use that on days like today. Now I've got to set up some other things here. I'll keep the camera rolling. You're going to see what it's like in real time. But anytime in any of my videos, if you want to skip ahead, just look in the timeline below and you can skip straight to little chapters. I try to mark out the chapters so that you can see the start of the activation stuff. Right now I'm just going to set up my logging here. Which I brought. I know I brought my tablet with me today. Didn't I? Yes, I did. Yeah, the tablet's so much easier to log through. Let's see if I brought. I was hoping I brought my SP4 paddles, but I may not have today. Let me check in here. I may just use my, um, ah, here we go. I may just use my nice pocket paddles from C.W. Morse, which are like, kind of like the Volkswagen the, of paddles. They are just made for everybody to use. They're, they work super effectively. And I love these, I love those paddles. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and use this cable as my panel cable. It's really an audio cable. But it's a three and a half millimeter one with three conductors, so it'll work just fine to be a key cable. Since I already have it out. Why not do that? And plug in this. I am super curious if this is going to tune up. Before I go too far, I think I'm going to try the tuning. You can hear that there are thunderstorms and stuff around the QRN, QR Nancy. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's really bad. This is so noisy. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is going to be fun. I don't mind. I think it's important that you're able to operate in all conditions, you know. But QRN, when it's rough, is just not very fun because it's just so noisy. And no noise reduction can help. It can help knock it down a bit. But in CW, what will really help too is sometimes lower, um, making your bandwidth more narrow, you know, with a filter. Making a really narrow filter, um, it kind of blocks out a lot of that noise. I recently started using these right in the rain spiral bound notebooks and I really like these even though I'm not like today I don't really need it because I'm under shelter right now okay let's see so this is K2740, is that right? K2740. Oops. K2740. Lake Mormon. State Park, and today is the 27th of April. Oh my goodness, where has this year gone? 
I'm going to put KX2 MC750. And I'm not going to write down 20 meters yet. <laughs> I don't want to jinx this. <laughs> but the assumption that that's going to work really well. Okay, first of all, let me make sure before I set up these logs that it's on the 25th. Let me make sure I've got this log saved. Yes, I do. Good. I think I've already uploaded it anyway, but I always check. I may have to move my laptop a little further away. So you can hear the noise level goes up as I get near the touchpad. That is, some, that is a known issue with this particular one. Actually, this is a pretty RF quiet uh, Surface Go. The surf, I use a Surface Go. This is an original Surface Go. I bought used in 2019 for like $200 or $180, I think, at the unclaimed baggage store in Alabama. Total impulse purchase. One of the best impulse purchases I've ever made, to be honest. It, it works brilliantly for hammer to radio stuff. I love it. Here we go. So now I'm going to set up this. You probably can't see this very easily in the, the 20 meters CW. Uh, my SIG info is K-2740. I'm going to move this further away from my radio with the hopes that it won't be quite as noisy. Okay, here it goes, guys. Will it tune? Ha <laughs> ha, one to one. Excellent. Excellent. It didn't have to work very hard at all for that. At least I've got a match. Now, that doesn't mean that the antenna is super efficient right now. Oh, I'm not quite on. I want to move down to 27, 20, 61.5, sorry. That noise level is around S5, QRN is. See if you, this is the thing about noise reduction. First of all, when you use noise reduction, you need to set it and you need to let it do its thing for a little while. It has to kind of sort out the noise. I actually am not a big fan of noise reduction. I don't use it very often. And when I do use it, I use it very lightly just to take the edge off of something, just sort of like the audio peaks off of it. Because what happens, I find, is that noise reduction creates these artifacts uh, in the audio that I don't like. And I, I'll listen to people using really heavy noise reduction. And not all noise reductions are created equal, I should say. I think the one in the KX2 is pretty darn good. But I just tend not to use it like so I'll probably put it like at number two or three something like that and we'll we'll see if that helps a little bit I'm doing it more for you to be honest because uh, I can kind of ignore it I don't like QRN but I can I can kind of tune it out it's a good practice to do that the negative today is that the QRN is so high and because it's just all the thunderstorms uh, within the 20 meter footprint uh, here in the United States it, that it's it's going to make it hard for me to hear weak signals, and that's the that's the shame. Okay, let's see. Let's find. Let's try fifty-seven I should do like my buddy Jim does. I noticed that he, and Jim, if you're watching this, you know who you are. <laughs> I noticed that he always sets up on point three. So he doesn't set up on point five. He doesn't set up on point zero or, you know, like right on the kilohertz frequency. He sets up at point three. That's kind of an interesting compromise in CW because you can kind of get away with that, actually. And that probably means that he very rarely has anybody on top of him. So I should probably be doing that too. Let's see if anybody's here. First of all, I'm going to hit the ATU one more time. Yeah, okay. I love these paddles. These, you need a set of these if just as an extra set of paddles. I actually think that there are two sets of paddles everybody should have beyond the normal paddles that they use day to day in the field. Um, one of them are these just simple double paddles from CW Morse. These are 3D printed. And they're, they're just awesome. I have had these paddles since, 
I've had them now for three years. I treat them very roughly. I just throw them in my pack. I, I never try to protect them or anything. And they're super durable and reliable and you can adjust them really easily in the field and they're very inexpensive. These are the best, cheapest paddles you can possibly buy. <laughs> I really do believe that. I think that they're worth more than they charge for them, if you want to know the truth. I think that they probably leave a little bit of money on the table. I love C.W. Morse, and in full disclosure, C.W. Morse, C.W. Morse, Radiotity, and Chelligans are the only three people, the only three companies that I have as affiliates. I've been asked to be affiliates for a lot of other companies, but these are ones that I really like. I love C.W. Morse. Um, the Delgado family runs it straight out of Texas. They build everything in Texas. They design it. They have just been incredible and they give you great customer service and just incredible quality for the price. So you should always have one of these, I think. Uh, they make a single lever version of this too and they make a version that's on a, stain, on a steel base and I have one of those two that I love. Another one you should have is uh, N6 ARA's Tiny Paddles and I keep those here in my pack actually. These are in my KX2 pack all the time. These are the paddles. These I use mainly as a backup, but they work really well as just paddles. I did an activation ages ago just using these paddles with my KX2 and they work so well. And they're very inexpensive. You can build it as a kit or you can uh, buy it pre-made. And Ara, N6ARA, just an awesome guy, just a really, really wonderful fellow. So you're supporting, and, and he, just like C.W. Morse, does not charge enough for these. I think that he could probably get more money out of these, but he doesn't, and neither does C.W. Morse for these paddles. I mean, these are, these are a great price. But you should always have this. This is a spare key for when things go south. Maybe you damage your key or something happens. Maybe there's a disconnect and you don't have your soldering iron, you can't fix it. Then you got this key to, as a backup, uh, just to get the job done. However, I know people that only use these keys. In fact, I've got the tiny paddle jack that I use with my MTR3B and I love it. I swear I'm gonna to get to my activation. If you can't tell, this is not an activation where I'm very pressed for time. <laughs> so that's the reason why you're getting a lot of extra talk today. Which is probably a bad thing, to be honest. One more thing I need to do looking at the time is make sure that I've got my camera hooked up to a battery because I will probably for sure run this battery out. We are going to be listening to some noise today, guys and girls. Just listen to that band. I'm going to plug in the camera and then we're going to start calling CQ. Get a drink of water here while I can. Well, Need to get my key in going. That was just a tuner upper, by the way. I didn't. No one sent a call sign or anything when I sent QRL, so I don't take that as someone actually being on frequency. I think someone is just tuning up. Okay, let's see. What time is it? Okay, 1900 UTC. Great signal. Okay, 
I heard a 5J. Oh my word, they were down in the noise. Okay. Okay. This is going to be a tough one. Oh, wait. I'm gonna try to change the RF gain. Let's see here. No, RF game. No, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't want pitch. I want RF game. And I change it. There we go. I'm gonna knock down my RF game a little bit and see if this helps with some of the noise. That is another trick you can use. I'll turn off my noise blanker too. That was on from last.
nice. QSB too. You hear how that signal went way up? So what I did was I lowered the RF gain a little bit. That takes out some of that level of noise. Now it does have an effect on all signals, but I feel like that makes the signals pop out a little bit better. Okay. Now, I'm calling CQ so people kind of get an idea like, oh, he's just not hearing me right now. I also want to take a picture of my setup. <laughs> They'll probably get, they, they're hearing the QRN as well. It's not just me. Get my shots in for my blog post. Okay. Camera was okay or okay. disappeared. keep sending that CQ. That'll also keep my spot fresh. Oh, I just barely hear somebody in the low background there.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure there are weak stations calling me. By me calling CQ, though, I'm trying to give them the message that, hey, I can't hear you. I'm sending a little message to my buddies. contacts one more and I have a valid park activation so actually so the answer to the question is heck yeah this antenna works <laughs> it works just fine and the whole thing is dry I don't have to like do anything with it it's just it's it's great as is it as effective as it would be under you know no it would be more effective if I had it outside Oh, I can hear somebody just barely in there. I am trying to dig you out. I love doing weak signal work, but this is really tough. is really This is so sloppy today. You know, we're going to try to QSY to the 17 meter band. Maybe it's not quite as noisy. Let's QSY up here. <clears throat> now, you know what? I think I can actually move this. I'm going to go move this antenna. I won't show you this, but I'm going to move the, the whip down to the 18 megahertz position. I'll be right back. Let me see. Maybe this will work. I doubt it'll be resonant though. Okay. Let's see if this metal roof throws off the antenna. I have to first disengage. So what I did, uh, this will give me a little bit more of a chance to tell you this. What I did was I lowered the RF gain. Now that is a trick you can always use in summer months and things like if you live in a part of the world with a lot of thunderstorms and stuff. That'll help knock down the level of QRN. Um, it also you know, kind of has an effect on the signal you're trying to hear to your target signal. But I do feel like that overall RF gain helps those signals pop out a little bit better and it's less fatiguing. So you can turn your RF gain, change your RF gain turn up your AF gain a little bit and it's just a little quieter a little easier on the ear so you can hear the signal pop out a little bit better uh, but it does have a broad effect over the whole band so um, that has to be kept in mind too this is a lot less noisy up here oh wait yeah I need to go change my ATU ATU mode bypass I'm getting a 1.5 to 1 actually Okay, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. 
see, I'm, I'm impressed that the antenna, if I can show you easily here right now or not, uh, the antenna is actually, you know, uh, it actually extends all the way for for 17 meters or 18 megahertz. So I can actually have it as like a sort of a full length in here and it doesn't quite reach the ceiling. So the only thing that's affecting it right now is just being under this metal roof. So see how well this works. Now 18 meters may be dead and that could just be a fact of life. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine if it is. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll make do. Okay, no, I'm not going to hit the ATU. The ATU is disengaged. Let's start calling CQ. Oh, there's another. Okay, so my buddy Mike says you walked into another CME. Not as nasty as the previous CME, but all the bands are compromised. He said you'll still get your 10. <laughs> this is my buddy Mike Kate, RAT. here while I can. Yep, so that was good feedback from my buddy Mike. <laughs> There's at least so many photos I can take here. Let me take a picture of the antenna. I'm loving this though. I, I'm pretty impressed that that antenna is actually giving me a reasonable SWR. So it's like about a 1.5 to 1, maybe 1 1.6 to 1. Perfectly acceptable. logs. <clears throat> Texas under a picnic shelter. I'll take that. <laughs> Jim. Thank you, Jim. I've got my 10 now. Yay. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> so I've at least got my valid activation now. And Jesse, if you're watching this video, Jesse is, he's actually, he knew about me because he's actually a subscriber to my channel and uh, Jesse with Chelligans. And I hope you don't mind that the very first time I give this thing a go, it's, underneath a picnic shelter <laughs> but you know what the tripod man it works great for this I love this actually the flexibility to do that it's wonderful I'm not expecting a whole lot of 17 meters if we got hit by CME then it's going to be very unstable here but it's a lot quieter isn't it I won't, I won't be hanging around for a whole lot longer. I'm going to make dinner for my parents tonight. 
We've got uh, an idea of what to put together for him. Then tomorrow night, I'll still be in the area. So I may, I may end up doing another activation tomorrow. Again, it'll be a rainy activation. I think we've got rain in the forecast all day tomorrow. And um, I'm just listening. Um, so uh, it'll be a rainy day activation again, but I should be able to get that in. And then later in the evening, I'm recording a Ham Radio Workbench podcast. And I'm looking forward to hanging with my buddies, uh, George, Mark, uh, Vince, Rod, and Mike. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely love doing those. Love doing those uh, podcasts. I'm not a guy with a whole lot of extra time on my hands, but um, uh, when they asked me to join their crew, I didn't even hesitate to accept that because I've done I've done several um, shows with them, probably, I don't know, four, four, maybe five, uh, with the Ham Radio Workbench crew. They've had me on it as a guest at least two or three times, and then I've been with them, I think, on maybe a live stream for the Ham Radio the um, QSO Today Expo, and uh, I enjoy hanging with them so much uh, because I was a big fan, still a big fan of that podcast. I listened to it for, you know, probably at least a couple of years and uh, uh, never missed an episode, loved listening to it because I th the, I'm the least knowledgeable guy in that group. Um, I feel like Vince always says that he's the turkey among eagles uh, because everybody there is so knowledgeable about stuff. Well, <laughs> I think I'm like the chicken among eagles and a turkey. Um, you know, I go out and play radio a lot, but I'm, I'm not an engineer. I have no background in any of that stuff. But I learned so much from them. It's just like it's like the best ham radio club ever. And, um, and I kind of use it as my ham radio club time. I belong to the Blue Ridge Amateur Radio Club, which is located in Hendersonville, North Carolina. I'm a, you know, a member and I love that club. I think they're a good club, uh, but I hardly ever go to the meetings. In fact, I haven't been to the meeting and I don't know, maybe I've been to a field day, maybe a couple years ago, but, uh, the meetings for me is it's almost about an hour drive, not quite an hour drive. And my family schedule right now, when the nights that they hold the meetings are nights that I have other things my daughters are doing, so I just can't, I can't go. Uh, they do allow Zoom meetings uh, for those, but, uh, but again, I'm occupied during that time anyway, so I can't really attend in person. Uh, but the Ham Radio Workbench crew, they uh, meet, usually we record on Friday evenings late. It's kind of late, and that's the negative, because I'm not a very late night boy, but uh, they usually start around 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific. And it's just so much fun. Uh, they're such great guys. They have a good sense of humor. Nobody takes themselves too seriously, which I really love. Um, you know, usually when you find people who are super smart and that uh, have a good sense of humor and are humble, that's like the best of, of all those worlds. <laughs> so I enjoy hanging with them, and I'm honored that they would even want to have me on there. I guess you always need to have somebody to ask the questions that uh, is not an expert, you know, and that's my role, I feel is to um, be the, um, uh, kind of be the guy asking the, uh, the questions. <laughs> like, hang on a second, what does that acronym mean? You know, I think that's sort of my, my role. Back to calling CQ, so that's number 11. Actually, I don't mind this. Uh, I don't mind having these activations that are a little slower. See, 17 meters is in rougher shape, but there's no QRN, 
And when a little opening happens, someone's really strong. And that's what happens a lot when things are unstable. Like we probably, I was working both of these people probably when, um, you know, the QSB was working a little bit more in my favor, you know, when it wasn't in a trough or whatever. I can tell that the, uh, it's floating between about, it's probably about a 1.7 to 1. People shouldn't panic too much about your SWR. Really, don't worry too much about your SWR. Thanks for coming to my rescue. Listen to that strong signal. That's an S9. This is where having electronic gear is so nice. I've got some um, right in the rain pins on the way, and I think it'll make it a little easier for you to see my logs as I'm doing my activations. I decided I would invest in these. I like these pads a lot. They are not cheap. But I like the fact that they're waterproof because I often get my stuff wet even if I'm not operating in, in the rain. I'm just operating around the rain. And sometimes I get, you know, snow and all kinds of other things during the year. So I'm just going to try. I'm just sucking it up and buying these. I think I bought three of these for like $19. But there's actually quite a lot of paper in these. And I think each one of those should last me a while. I think that that pack of three should take me through maybe. Maybe it'll take me through to... Um, you know, the fall, maybe further than that. Uh, I'll find out. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Okay. I will have to cut this short. My sister needs my help, so I'm probably going to... Um... Okay. I'm going to call QRT. There we go. I need to call QRT. My sister just sent a text message and she needs help with something. So I've got about another, about a 40, 45 minute drive uh, back to uh, my folks place. So I'm gonna go help her. And this was an awesome activation. I got 12 contacts, but man, what fun. See, don't let the rain stop you. <laughs> now the MC750, you know, you can do this, but if you have a, a an impasse light, or if you have um, another vertical, a Wolf River coils for vertical, um, you know, Wolf River coils has that little sliding coil at the bottom and you may have to tinker around with it a little bit if you're under a metal roof like I am. But don't let it stop you from just setting up in, in a space like this. A Wolf River's coil uh, antenna is a perfect example of one that does not do well in the rain because the rain will, the coil will get wet and it bridges those gaps between the coil and it just, it'll screw up everything. So just set it up inside of a picnic shelter if you've got access to a picnic shelter. Don't worry about it. It may not be perfect and maybe what you can do is get it near resonant and then um, as long as it's acceptable, go for it. If you can't get it below like a three to one in your normal spot where you put, where you tap off that coil, then if you have an ATU, just let it finish the job so that the radio is happy. And yes, it won't be quite as efficient, but as long as it's putting out some RF, you're probably going to do fine. This is a day obviously with really bad space weather. I mean, you could tell besides just the QRN level on 20 meters, and I bet you 30 and 40 were even worse. I mean, and with a CME, I mean, you know, we were able to do this activation with relative ease. It took a little longer, but not too bad. 
you got to keep in mind, a lot of us that have been doing POTA since like you know, 2019 or so, back when it was so much smaller, I think I mentioned this in the last video, actually, the, um, you know, we were used to activations that, that took a long time. You know, uh, there were less people out there hunting, so activations took a lot longer, and it was in the doldrums of the solar cycle in a big way. So, like, there would be, like, no sunspots, <laughs> and we'd have really disturbed conditions, and we still went out and played radio, but it may take an hour or an hour and a half to get your 10 contacts, and that was where we always worked with each other to help each other out. Uh, my buddies Mike and Eric... WD8RF and K8RAT. K, uh, Mike, K8RAT, used to be one of the leaders uh, in the Hunter board, if you looked him up. He had he was just amazing. <clears throat> and he helped so many people because on really bad days, he would follow somebody as they moved bands, and if he could work them, he'd work them multiple times. And that saved so many activations for me. Uh, so don't ever be afraid, especially if you're a hunter and you're at home and you're just having a good time hunting some stations and the and the conditions are bad like they are today. If you can hear someone on multiple bands or in multiple modes, like from CW to single side band or a digi mode, um, work them on several of those because in the Parks on the Air program, that counts towards your 10 that you need to have a valid activation. So work them on multiple modes and multiple uh, bands. Uh, that will that will probably you know really help the activator. So go for it. Anyway, thank you so very much for joining me on this rainy day, and I hope you have a great uh, rest of your week. I hope you get a chance to go out and play a little radio outdoors, and uh, yeah, just enjoy this fine hobby. Uh, don't worry too much about the theory. Just get out there and <laughs> put out an antenna. Uh, take what radio you have, what battery you have, and hit the field. I promise you this stuff is so addictive, and it's for a good reason. It's just so much fun. Anyway, again, thank you so much for joining me today. Take care. Oh, and very thank you very much for your support, Patreon and Coffee Fund supporters. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I love that support. It helps me predict how I'm going to be able to invest in you know my channel and my website and do all those things. And um, yeah, and if you can't afford it, don't worry. The content will always be free. If you need to, you know, if you're a newly licensed ham and you need your first radio, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Take care of yourself. <laughs> put, put your oxygen on before you put oxygen on someone next to you in the airplane, right? But again, thank you so very much for joining me today. And until next time, seven threes.